and the people who inhabit this world. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the great companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, I do not have regret on any of my days on which the sun has set. I don't have regret on any of my days on which the sun has set, in which my good deeds have not increased and my appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreased. My appointment with Allah has decreased by a day and I do not have increase in my good deeds in that day. I regret that day. Those are the days I regret. Prophet Nuh salam, it's written in the books, when the angel of death came to take his soul, he addressed Prophet Nuh salam and he said, Oh, the longest living prophet, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with a life of 1,400 years approximately. The Quran says that he gave da'wah he gave, he gave to the people, he called people towards one Allah for 950 years, this is what the Quran says. But his lifespan was 1400 years. So when the angel of death comes to him to take his soul, he asks him, Oh, the longest living prophet, how does it feel like living 1400 years in this world? Such a long life Allah has blessed you, how does it feel? Prophet Nuh says, It's like you're living in a house. I felt like I'm living, I lived in a house. I entered from this, house, this door and I, I'm exiting from that door. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that day, that meaning the day of judgment, you will see that this entire life Allah gave you in this life, doesn't matter if it was 50 years, 40 years, 60 years, 100 years, 1,400 years, doesn't matter how long it was. If death is the end to life, respected listeners, if death is the end to life, it doesn't matter life is long or short because death is going to finish it off. It's going to conclude it. So a human being, when he stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will, he will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he will see, Allah mentions this in the Quran, that his entire lifespan, no matter how long it was, it will seem to him like it was an evening or the following morning. That's how it seems to him. That is why Prophet ﷺ said, Ikhtanim khamsun qabla khams. Value five before the coming of the five. Shababaka qabla haramik. Value your youth before you become old. Because if you're not become, gonna become old when you're young, you will die. If you, be, if you do not die, you will become old. Because once you become old, a pious person says, if an old pious person would say, if I was to get the youth back, if I was to get the youth back, I will tell the youth what havoc the old age has caused on me. Meaning the difficulties that come with the old age, the hardships. So Prophet is saying, value your young age before the old age comes to you. Because one of the questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask on the day of judgment, Four questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask on the day of judgment, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Allah will ask you, I gave you, I gave you youth, what did you do with your young age? I gave you wealth, where did you earn, where did you spend it? I gave you health, how did you utilize it? And then I gave you life, how did you use your life? So when Allah is asking about us our entire life, out of that entire life, Allah is extracting the youth and asking because youth is the most precious and difficult time in the life of the human being. Allah is asking about that young age. So Prophet is saying, value your young age before old age strikes you. And value your health before sickness comes upon you. Sickness does not come to us with a notice does not give us time that I'm going to come such a such day. It suddenly strikes a person. Prophet ﷺ said, value your health before sickness comes to you. And value your free time before you become really busy. 
وغناك قبل فقرك value your wealth before poverty strikes you وحياتك قبل موتك and value your life before death strikes you if you look at these five things three things deal with the precious time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our youth the free time and our life itself Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith read by Imam Bukhari rahmatullah this is one of those ahadith few ahadith Jawami al-Kalam, which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned through his noble tongue, inspired by, from Allah subhanahu an inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in very concise words, few words but very deep and profound, few of these ahadiths, if we act upon this, Imam Shafi rahmatullah says it will be enough for us to attain salvation, to attain forgiveness and to attain paradise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of those hadiths is this, Ni'matani maghunun fihima kathirun minan nas. There are two great blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to every human being. Two great blessings of which many people, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, many people are deceived. In fact, with the translation of maghnunun, the Arabic word, the ulama, said the closest meaning, the, the English translation that comes to it is duped. And duped is the word it's used in business transactions. When you buy or sell things, I was duped. They duped me into this. They tricked me. I was cheated, right? So Prophet says there are two great blessings of which many people are deceived. Many people, majority of the human beings are deceived by these two great blessings what Allah has given them. And may Allah make us among the minority who utilize these two blessings, respected listeners. Amen. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are those two blessings? as wal faragh Good health and free time. A person having good health, a person having free time, he thinks or she thinks that this is going to last. That is where we are deceived. That is where we are duped because this is not going to last. This is not going to last. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, take use of that, take advantage of that. Before you become sick, before you become really busy, do something about it. That is why Hassan Basri Rahmatullah says, the second generation of the Sahaba, the next generation of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says because he had seen the companions of the Prophet. And he said, I saw the companions of the Prophet for them. For them, time was more precious when he was telling to the people around him. He said, I have seen the companions of the Prophet. For them, the time was more precious than money is to you. The way you guard your money, the way you guard your wealth, that's how they used to guard their time. And this is what respected listeners has brought us into the, into the passenger seat on the chariot of life. Where once upon a time, during the time of the Prophet and the companions and maybe the next generation, we were sitting on the driver's seats of the chariots of life. Now because we have not used the time properly, maybe we abused it, maybe we are abusing it. Because of that we have fallen back into the passenger seat of our lives. <laughs> so Prophet said, utilize this. Five things before the coming of the five. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected listeners. Allah doesn't need to swear on anything. Allah Rabbul Izzat, Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul Alameen, does not need to take an oath to say that something is important. He can just say an order and he said, this is important, do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to do that. But to emphasize, to stress, to show us its significance and importance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath. Allah is swearing, وَاللَّيْلِ by the night. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the changing of the night and the day, they are signs for people who understand. Who are these people who understand the changing of the night and the day, the changing of the time, the fleeing of the time, the running away of the time? Who are these people, O oh Allah? 
الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحان فقنا عذاب النار these are those who remember Allah sitting standing reclining walking and they ponder over the creation of Allah and say oh Allah you have not created this in vain for waste therefore glory be to you oh Allah and save us from the punishment of the fire so Allah does not need to take an oath, respected listeners. But Allah takes an oath, وَاللَّيْلِ By the night, وَالسُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسِ By the morning, He takes us to Asr, وَالْعَسْرِ By the evening, to the night time, and to, to the celestial objects that move the time. وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْدُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَا The sun, the moon, the stars. إِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةُ وَانْشَحْتَ الْقَمَرِ The hour has drawn near and you're still, and the moon has been split. <laughs> the hour has drawn near, and, and the humanity is still in the state of carelessness, in the state of heedlessness. Doing anything in haste is discouraging Islam. Is, Islam does not like rush, rush, rush. Hurry up, hurry up. Islam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-anat min Allah wal-ajlat min shaitan Hastiness, rush, rush comes from shaitan and patience and forbearance and endurance comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam But however, because Allah knows Rabbul Alameen, the creator of all the human beings and entire universe Allah knows what is at stake Allah knows how important this time is how short this life is, no matter how long we live. Allah knows that this is a very short life compared to the everlasting life of the hereafter. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? Does He tell us to rush? Does He tell us to hurry up? Of course He does. Allah says, وَالسَّارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ عِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Race, hurry up, hasten towards the forgiveness of your Lord who has prepared paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. Who has prepared wide paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. See, when we go to work in the rush hour, there is traffic jam, there is bumper to bumper traffic. We are stuck in the traffic because everybody is racing to be there on time, to meet those deadlines, to, 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 to be there on time on the meeting. It's for the worldly things people are rushing. And for the worldly things when people are rushing, there is a traffic jam. There is a thing called rush hour. There's a bumper to bumper traffic. But Allah is saying, when you rush, when you hasten, when you hurry up for the hereafter, there is no traffic jam. How wide is the road? As wide as the heavens and the earth, Allah is saying. As wide as the heavens and the earth. So hurry up towards the forgiveness of your Lord, who has prepared paradise as wide as the heavens and the earth. For who? Those who are conscientious of their duties to Allah. Who are these people, O Allah? الَّذِينَ يُنْفِخُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْقَادِ مِنَ الْغَيْبِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ These are those who stand in good times and in bad times. They spend in the cause of Allah. And then what else they do? وَالْقَادِ مِنَ الْغَيْبِ They control their anger. And then they forgive one another. Surely Allah loves those who do good. Allah loves those who do good. When Allah swears the wal asr, by the evening, by the time, by the evening, Allah is swearing. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith al Qudsi says, Allah subhanahu wa taala himself says, An dahr, I am time. Allah is time. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying. So use use the time profitably, profitably for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And. Allah Azza wa Jal Himself, because He knows the ins and outs of the universe and what is beyond, Allah is saying, Wal Asr inna al insana lafi husr. Indeed, I swear by the time entire human beings are in a state of continuous, perpetual loss. They are in a loss. From the moment the child is born, he is in a continuous state of loss. Because when a child is born, that is the only time child is in a complete state of pure 
sinless form. That is why Prophet said when people return from Hajj, when people return from Hajj, Kayomi Walada to Ummu, they are like as if the day the mother gave birth to them, they are sinless. And then from that moment on, he is in a continuous state of loss. He, born, he is born in the right nature, in the right fitrah, said Prophet wasallam. But the environment around him, the parents and the environment make him either a Yahudi, a Nasrani or a fire worshipper. Right? So the environment changes him and he's in a continuous, perpetual state of loss. And then Allah swears, وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَتُورِ سِينِينَ وَحَادَ الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ لَقَدْ خَلَفْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ Allah is swearing by the fig, by the olive, the produce of the holy city, Baytul Maqdas, Jerusalem, where many of the prophets came. Allah is swearing by that place. Then Allah is swearing by the Mount Sinai where Prophet Musa re received the revelations. Then Allah is swearing by the safe and secure city of Makkah where Prophet came and Jibreel descended with the Quran. So three places Allah is swearing. And then Allah is saying, indeed we created human beings in the best of the molds, in the best of the fashions. And then what did we do? We reduced him to the lowest of the low. How low? He becomes lower than the animals. He becomes lower than the animals. So what is the way out, respected listeners? What is the way out for all of us? If all of us are in a continuous, perpetual state of loss, what is the way out for us? Of course there is a way out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the curer of everything, Allah is giving us the cure. In both the surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ those who have Iman, have faith, and those who do good deeds. Other than these two categories, everybody is in a state of loss. May Allah make us among those respected listeners. May Allah make us utilize our time properly. This is a trust given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Because it's something so precious. We have banks to store our money. We have warehouses, storage houses to store our things. But there is nothing to store time, respected listeners. Once it's gone, it's gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the, a human being when he regrets the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. Allah says twice he regrets about the time. Major regrets of a person. The time Allah had given him. One is at the time of death. Allah when the time of death Allah is the time of death. When the, when the legs are closing in together, when the soul is being taken, and he knows this is a time of departure. This is a time of his departure from this world. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are closer to him than his, own, than his own people. We are so close to him at the time of his death. At that time, when he regrets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this in the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Wa ma yaf'al dhalik fa ulayka humul khasirun. O you who believe, let not your wealth and your children distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me keep track of time since I'm talking about time. May not, let not your children and wealth distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever is distracted will be among the losers, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When children are an obligation for, on the parents, wealth is an obligation to take care of. How are we being distracted by that? Who, the, the scholars say, if our children are distracting to us from praying salat, if they're distracting us to go to hajj, if there are a distraction or wealth is a distraction in paying zakat, then this is taking away us away from the remembrance of Allah and we will be among the losers. So what do you do? Because when a person is dying, he cannot move around. He cannot go to the masjid and help the community. What he can do at the time of death? So therefore, what do you do at the time of death? When you know you're going to die, what do you do? You cannot move. You cannot get up from your bed. Spend 
spend what you have so that you become among righteous. But and, and the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at that time, human being will say, Oh Allah, just return me back for a few more, for, for a little bit more time, oh Allah. Give me a little respite, respite, <laughs> so that I would become someone, I would, I would become among the righteous. I would become among the pious. But this is a futile request he makes. Allah knows that if he goes back and returns back, he's going to get back into the same old things what he was doing before because Allah had given him long enough life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, That not a moment, not a second will be delayed or preponed. At that time, that moment, that second has been set to be to, for his soul to be taken away. Wallahu khabiru bima ta'amalu. And Allah knows what you do. This is the first time a human being regrets. The second time a human being regrets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he stands in front of Allah, when he knows that the time of good deeds is over, the time for reward has come. At that time he says, Rabbana akhrijna na'mal salihan ghayra ladhi kunna na'mal. Oh Allah, send me back, oh Allah, send me back so that I would do something good and I would not do which was causing your displeasure. Which was causing your displeasure. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Awalam ammirkum ma'idadakkaru fi matadakka wa ja'akumun nadheer. Didn't we give you long enough life for you to take advice, counsel, admonition, warning? Didn't we give you long enough life to reflect? Wa ja'akumun nadheer. And moreover, the warner came to you in the form of the prophets and the people who came to remind you the white hair, the grandchildren these were all the signs for you the sickness, the cold, the headache, the fever these were all the signs for you so this is a time a human being regrets respected listeners so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us let us use it in the way respected listeners it makes our world at the same time it makes our akhirah, it makes our hereafter. Because the time is very short, respected listeners. That is why Prophet ﷺ showed us the ways to, to, to make our time precious. He would get up in the morning and make the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra min khayra ma hadha fi yawm wa khayra ma ba'dahu Oh Allah, give me what is good on this day and what comes after that. Give me the good what comes after in this day. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri ma fi hadha al-yawm wa sharri ma ba'dahu And Allah save me from the evil of this day that comes and that comes afterwards. And the du'as Prophet Sallallahu taught us respected listeners they are so useful and helpful and, and, and a blessing that, that protects us that covers us that encompasses us with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially in this day and age of living a very stressful life. Allahumma ma asbah bi bin ni'matin aw bi ahdin min khalqik fa minka wahdak la sharika lak fa lak alhamdu wa lak ashukr The moment Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would wake up in the morning Alhamdulillahi ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur All praises be to Allah who has given me life after death and unto Him we are returning back All the good things that are coming to me this morning and to the entire creation are from Allah and Allah alone there is no partner to you, O oh Allah, that for all praises and all thanks be to you. Can you imagine, respected listeners, reading these beautiful words, reciting these beautiful words, and getting up and making and starting our day? Whoever reads just a few moments, Allah is giving us the time 24 hours. Prophet said, one of the signs of the day of judgment. One of the signs of the day of judgment is Allah will shrink the time. What does it mean Allah shrinks the time? Everybody has 24 hours from the time of Adam salam, and we will have until the day of judgment. How does the time shrink? In spite of having all the technological advances and conveniences at our fingertips, we should be getting so much more free time, but the more we have gotten busier, the more we are complaining about time. What happened? Because that barakah, that blessings from the time has been taken away because we're not utilizing it properly. That's what's happened. 
Whoever reads three khuls in the morning three times, Prophet said, Qul huwa Allahu ahad three times. Qul a'udhu bi bil falaq three times. Qul a'udhu bi bin nas three times. You just, it takes about what, three minutes, for two minutes. Allah will protect you until the evening time, said Prophet yeah. Whoever reads it in the evening time, make the three, four minutes precious. And you will get the protection of Allah until the morning time. Whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday, said Prophet Many virtues. One of the virtues in this life, Prophet said, Allah will save that person from the trials and tribulations for the next eight days. Meaning until the next Juma, Allah will save him or her from the trials and tribulations. <laughs> you go to the mall. I mean, what is, how is that environment in the mall? Everything is attracting to you, everything is attracting towards the glimmer and the glitter of this world. Glimmer, glitter, glimmer of this world. That is what is happening in the malls when we go to the malls. But how do you make the time precious? Prophet said, whoever reads these words in the marketplace, like the mall, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd yuhi wa yumit biyadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir These are the words that glorify the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever reads this, Imam Tirmizi rahmatullahi alayhi wa sallam relates this hadith in his sahih, sahih, whoever reads these words, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will write one million good deeds in this person's account and Allah will erase one million bad deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate his or her status one million times in paradise. Two minutes respected listeners, one minute, few seconds in that mall, you make it precious. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because you had made the time precious, that limited time Allah has given us, Allah is rewarding so much. Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. Wallahu wasi'un alim. Allah can give many times more respected listeners. May Allah make us among those who make our time precious. The dua Prophet وسلم, used to make Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wa a'udhu bika min al-adzi wal-kasl Oh Allah, I seek your protection from anxiety and grief and I seek your protection from incompetence and laziness. May Allah save us from incompetence and laziness, respected listeners. May Allah make us among those who utilize our time for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one of the signs a pious predecessor says one of the signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests a person. Allah does not like a person is when he abuses his time what Allah has given us. May Allah give us a tawfiq to pray our five times salat on time. And every day we respected listeners. The Quran that came from Loh al mahkum from above the heavens. Let's start our day, let our eyes respected listeners. What a blessing Allah has given us in these eyes. Let's start our day reading the Quran. Let it be at least one page, few lines. Let our day start with our eyes falling on the Qur'an, respected listeners. Hmm? All of us here are here living in America, respected listeners. Let us make our time precious. Let us make this intention that whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, even if my work, my job, my family, whatever I'm doing, let it be worldly things. This is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that every moment, Every second of ours will become worship in 